Good morning, folks. Another month of December, another year of Advent of Code. I am all up for it. Still a bit tired because it is 6 o'clock in the morning here. But I'm psyched. I'm hyped. Uh, I participate every year. Uh, and uh, this year won't be any different. This year I tr thought about trying something new and this is the new thing. Uh, we'll, we're, we are live streaming on Twitch. Um, I will be solving the puzzles in F sharp, it's a .NET language. And I will not be winning any speed contests. Uh, we're just doing it for fun and uh, to learn a bit about the programming language. So without further ado, let's drop down to a screen and let's grab the puzzle for the 1st of December. Sonar sweep. Okay, we're minding our own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off. You rush to see if you can help. Apparently, one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. Before you know it, you are inside a submarine the elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights because of course it is. And it even has experimental antennae that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna signal strength by displaying 0 to 50 stars. So yeah, we're going for 50 stars again this year. Your instincts tell you that in order to save Christmas, you'll need to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Cool. Yes, we collect stars by solving puzzles. And we have two puzzles daily. Mm -hmm. The second puzzle is unlocked when we complete the first. Each one grants a star. Good luck. All right, so that was set up for the month. Now the actual puzzle. I'm gonna do this every day probably, but I'm so proud of this mug. Someone recognizes uh, where this is coming from. Give a shout out in chat. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the actual puzzle for today. As the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby seafloor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report, which is our puzzle input, appears. Each line is a measurement of the seafloor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Cool. So, say we have the following report. Report indicates that scanning outward from the submarine, the sonar sweep found depths of whatever, whatever, whatever. Cool. How quickly does the depth increase? Just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried into deeper water by an ocean current or a fish or something. To do this, count the number of times a depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. There's no measurement before the first. Okay, so we need to take a look at the measurements in pairs. And if there's an increase, we have a a case we need to count. Okay, let's grab this example and let's figure out how to do this. The first puzzles are, if you're new to Advent of Code, the first puzzles are always like a bit of a warm up, but they get really tricky, really, really, really fast. Uh, no, before I do anything else, let's first grab my custom input. Every player has a their own input. Just gonna drop those in a file here. 2000 lines, cool. I'm using Visual Studio 22, the new one. So if you see new stuff, that's probably why. Uh, let's make sure we can read it in. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna also put the example somewhere. That is not the example. Yes, it's bad. So we need to look at the numbers one by one, or in pairs of two. First number has no pair, or the first pair we should look at is 199 and 200. And we need to see whether they increase or decrease. Uh, okay, how do we look at numbers pairwise? I think there is a list of pairwise that might do exactly what we want. There's a list of each element and its predecessor. With the exception of the first element, this is literally what we need. So first let's do a quick parse of the input. Yeah, let's do a quick parse of the input. Is 
Is there no split lines? No, you just need to do split. I thought there was an overload that allowed you to provide a string. Like this. That's the case? Yeah, it looks like you can do that. Cool. And let's parse every number into a number. So we're out of the string world. Uh, that's an array. Well, let's just keep it a sequence. And let's just parse it using the int function. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we have numbers now. Um, and let's do them in a pairwise manner. So this should be all the pairs we have to take a look at, right? 199, 200, 200, 208. Cool. And now for every pair, we just take a look at, is it increasing or not? Uh, let's do that with a filter function. Just gonna define a new function called is increase. And it takes a pair of number one and number two, and it should return a Boolean. And then we just count the number of increases. So sec length, sec count, yeah, there we go. So this should give us seven once we implement this function. And it is just that the first number should be smaller than the second. I don't know if we have cases where we have two subsequent numbers of equal size. We don't really have that, right? Does the puzzle say anything about that case? An increase is bigger than for me, or larger than. So this should give us seven. It does give us seven. So let's now parse the input and do the same thing, which is literally this, I guess. And it gives us a number. Let's see if this is the correct, correct number as well. All right, that's part one down. Let's go to part two. <clears throat> Considering every single measurement isn't as useful as we expected. There's just too much noise in the data. Instead, consider sums of a three measurement sliding window. Okay, so we're just increasing the window size bit. There's also some helpful helper functions for that as well. So considering the example we just discussed, start by comparing the first and second three measurement windows. Okay, so we are comparing windows, not individual numbers. Okay, so first we bundle everything up in a sliding window of three, and then we compare two subsequent windows. First window is A, and then we sum it up. Second window is B, which is the next sliding window of size three. Yes, we sum that up and then we just see whether or not those two sums increase. Okay, that's a bit more interesting, but let's see if we can get it down. I am going to something I do for like every part two. Always just copy paste my code into a part two file. So now we are able to <laughs> hack around without needing part one to keep working. Okay, let's take a look. So we need to do triples or like three values in each, every window and then do the, is it an increase on the triples, not on two numbers? It's a bit of a change, not too much. Let's also work on the example first. So here, First thing we have to do is in this pipeline, instead of doing a pairwise and let me, uh, let me get rid of the, this one first. I'm just gonna format it a bit differently so we can see the steps more clearly. Parsing still has to happen. The pairwise has to go. We have to grab numbers, not by two of them, but by three of them. And I think there is a windowed function. Windowed returns a sequence that yields sliding windows containing elements drawn from the input sequence and every window is returned, blah, blah, blah. But important thing is you can give it a window size, which is exactly what we need. So this is probably uh, the triplets we have to take a look at. 
199, 200, 208, 200, 208, 210. That looks correct. And then we need to take uh, the pairwise of that. So every triple, uh, a pair of two triples. Uh, that's not windowed, sorry. That's pairwise. It's still 6 o'clock in the morning here, 6 a.m. Okay. Yes, that's what we need. And then we need, need to do an is increase on that. These three are... Oh no, we actually need to sum. Do we care about the numbers? We don't care about the numbers. So... Uh, when we do a window three here, we have the individual lists and let's sum every triplet. So let's do a sec sequence dot map sum. That way we sum every triplet. Why is there no sum? <laughs> List sum, sorry. It's defined in a module, so we need to prefix by the module name. I think uh, this takes triplets, yes. Next line uh, sums every triplet, yes. Then we do the pairwise on those sums. 607, 618, that is correct. And then we do exactly the same thing and we count. So we should have five. We have five. So let's run it on the actual uh, input we have. I'm just going to extract it into a function first. So let's write a solve function that takes some input. And we do the same thing, but we don't have to split for the real thing. And send this to the REPL and let's run this on or an actual input. Uh, input should be a list of strings. Yeah. Ah, no, I don't see what's wrong. It's a string array. Okay, something was confusing the REPL or F sharp interactive. This looks eerily similar similar to the <laughs> the previous result no i don't think that's correct actually oh yeah it is cool um so yeah that's a warm-up exercise for advent of code the summing threw me off for a second there but it's a cool warm-up exercise maybe we can try it in another programming language seeing that uh, it is a manageable thing to solve. But I think we're just going to keep it short and sweet today. And uh, let's call it a day here. The puzzles will ramp up in difficulty significantly, don't worry. So uh, we'll be here longer in the coming days and the coming weeks for sure. Especially in the weekends. Uh, I think it takes like four to six hours for me to solve some of the heavy puzzles. Don't think I'll be live streaming the whole thing because I need some R&R uh, &R and some coffee breaks in between. Well, thanks for watching. There are a lot of programmers solving Advent of Code. I think also on Twitch. So take a look. Um, there's a lot of stuff to take a look at. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.